All right, welcome back to this episode of the Deep Penetration Podcast. My name is Danny, in case you don't know who I am, and I am a love and self-esteem coach that works with the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, when it comes to all things self-esteem, love, self-identity, being able to navigate and manage a healthy and sustainable relationship, and really just kind of unpacking a lot of the stereotypes that we find within the queer community. And today, what I wanted to talk about was dating apps and the red flags to look out for when you are on these dating apps. Now, let me be clear, there is a difference between dating apps and hookup apps. And yes, over the years, it's kind of been... Uh, the lines have been blurred a little bit, let's put it that way. Um, but I think you can still find, no, I believe, I truly believe that you can find quality people on the right dating apps if you know what you are looking for, if you are clear on your needs and your expectations, um, and you are actually investing the time into looking at these people's profiles and reading their bios and and really doing the work essentially and i know for a lot of people that's like oh god I'm like i don't want to have to invest the time i don't want to have to invest all this you know i'm busy i have this i have that but the reality of the situation is is that if you want to actually benefit from using dating apps it's going to in, it involve some time and some investment i actually heard the other day um on TikTok, there was a, a person who was talking about dating apps and she was saying that it's not possible to find the right person um, on the dating apps because the dating apps are designed to keep you on them based on the algorithm and all of that stuff. And look, to a certain degree, I, I, I agree. It is a business, right? Dating apps are a business and they make their business by keeping people on the app. However, that doesn't account for the people that are actually utilizing the app. There are a lot of people who are signing up for dating apps who are wanting a serious relationship, who are wanting something long-term, and who are wanting to get the fuck off the app. So I understand where she's coming from, but I don't fully agree, which is why I work with people setting up their dating apps, really sifting through the BS of the apps and all of that. You know, I've created an entire course for for this process. It's the 101 of dating for uh, gay and bisexual men. So if that's something that you're interested in, I would highly recommend it. It's been very useful for a lot of my clients, but I digress. So dating apps, um, basically they've become the most popular and convenient way to meet people, especially for us in the queer community. And being that we are a group that has experienced discrimination, um, marginalization, harassment, violence, um, many of us have been forced to live our lives in the shadows, unfortunately. Granted, there are places in the United States that have passed progressive bills in favor of our basic rights as queer individuals, but that doesn't account for a majority of the United States. There are, I think, only like 15 states that have total rights protections for the LGBTQ plus community, which is only 30% of the country. Now, why do I bring this up? because it pertains to how we find love in the queer community, which is primarily through dating apps. You know, there is a sense of safety in it. And if you are someone who was raised or currently lives in a state without any LGBTQIA plus rights, then you fully understand the utilization of apps as a way to connect with others. And even then, it's not totally safe. There have been countless stories of people gay baiting or or opening up um, fake profiles to be able to meet with somebody to to beat them up, to murder them. And it's 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 horrific. You know, there's no there's no other way of putting it. Now, is it something that happens continually all the time? No, but it's happened enough that we have to be very cautious and we have to be very weary and cognizant when we are actively dating 
on these apps. You know, I remember for myself when I when I came out and I started to um, explore these dating apps. I'm I'm very blessed in the sense that I have a very open relationship with my mom, um, and we talk about everything and anything. And I remember her biggest concern for me was my safety, and and putting myself out there. You know, it wasn't necessarily about me being bisexual and me being in a relationship with another guy. Again, I'm incredibly blessed that my mom is so open and accepting. Um, even if there are aspects of the lifestyle that she does not necessarily agree with, she's been very caring and considerate. And she she loves my partner, um, and they have a great relationship and all of that stuff. But you know, her biggest thing was the safety aspect and making sure that I was being smart about the decisions that I was making when I was actually meeting up with these people and these individuals. So ensuring that you are a um, hyper aware of your dynamic with this person, right? Your conversations. And if at any point your gut starts to tell you something is off or there's a red flag, obviously listen to it. And making sure that you're 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 dating in a appropriate and cautious and safe way. You're meeting up in public. Um, you're spending some time with this person and maybe shit, even before you meet up with them, you're doing a, a FaceTime call to ensure that they are who they are, who they say they are. There's many different things that we can take into consideration. And I can kind of ramble on about this forever. But you know, all of that to say, basically, it's with with the way things currently are in the United States, unfortunately, we have to take some extra measures when it comes to being safe and cautious when dating. So that being said, dating apps uh, come with their downside as well. And it is incredibly important that you are aware of the red flags. So what are those red flags? And here are three that I have um, come to identify over the years and I think are incredibly important to take into consideration. Number one. Lack of clear photos or personal information, right? So a lack of clear photos or personal information is a huge red flag for me. And while it's understandable to be to be cautious about sharing too much of your personal information online, not having any photos or any information is incredibly suspicious to me. It's important to have at least a few clear photos that show your face and give an idea of what you look like, right? Who you are. And keep in mind, I'm referring to dating apps that are more serious in nature. So like the hinges and the OK Cupids and and, you know, I, I, I want to say Tinder. I feel like Tinder over the years has become a bit of a hookup app as well. But we'll 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 categorize Tinder as one of the more serious dating apps as well. Um, and obviously, we all know that Grinder has a plethora of faceless profiles because most men lead with a dick pic. And you know, if you have been there before, if you have had the pleasure of experiencing the beauty that is is Grinder, 90% of my interactions on Grinder when I was on Grinder was like introduction via dick pic. No, the one thing that I will say that I appreciated was there was no waste of time and there was no bullshit. You knew what you were getting up front. But the reality is, is I was getting more dick pics than I was getting face pics. I can guarantee you that if I went to a sauna or something and I was in a room full of 10 or 15 naked men, at being on Grinder, I would probably recognize them first by their dick instead of their face. And I know that that's a really ridiculous thing to say, but that's how it felt because that's that's literally what people lead with. Or it's a completely faceless profile and all you get is a, hey, what's up? What are you into? Top or bottom? Like, come on, guys. Like, I get it. Grinder is a hookup app. I understand that's really what it's used for. It's not this kind of romanticized dating app where you find the love of your life on Grindr. Some people have. I'm not saying that that's not the case. But yes, I get that it's just 
for hookups. But regardless of the fact, the reason why I bring that up is because if you're going to be looking for a serious relationship, do not take the mentality of being on Grindr and apply that to a more serious dating app like Hinge or eHarmony or any of those things. But to be honest with you, I don't even think they allow you to send dick pics and all that stuff anyways. So upload a face picture, please. Dear God, please. If you are going to do that, I would recommend, you know, if you're going to do so here, here's what I'll say. If you're going to do Grindr, um, I, I highly recommend the premium option, right, which enhances the security features. Um, and it doesn't allow people to take snapshots of your photos, which happens a lot. I can't tell you how many times I would find my photo floating around, not a nude, just like a profile photo floating around because somebody else took a snapshot of my photo and is utilizing it to pretend like they are me. It it was a nightmare. It was a total nightmare. Then you have to, you know, file a complaint and all of these types of things. But make sure that you're using the security features that are available. Yes, the premium option is going to cost you money. Yes, it's going to be more expensive. But I feel like there's a little bit more peace of mind in the sense that you feel a little bit more protected, right? Um, without photos, it's difficult to tell if the person is who they claim to be. So in addition, a lack of personal information, and by the way, I'm, I know that I'm jumping all over the place, but I'm jumping back to what I was talking about in regards to uploading photos and profile information. So again, upload a profile photo. Um, and personal information can be a sign that someone is not serious about finding a, a, a relationship, right? If someone is hesitant to share photos or personal information, take this seriously. You know, it could mean that they are hiding something such as, you know, their age or their appearance or their relationship status. And it's always a good idea to ask for more information if you are on. Sure. And if the person refuses to share or seems evasive, honestly, it's just best to move on and to find somebody who's a little bit more open and a little bit more honest. The second thing here is inconsistent or vague communication. So this can take many different forms. So it can be sporadic messaging or one word responses or vague dismissive answers to questions. And it's normal for people to be busy, right? Or to not always be available. However, if they can also they can also clear the air or at least be communicative and inform you that they are busy. Because look, if they are actually serious about getting to know you and wanting to connect and all of these things, they are going to prioritize communicating with you and they have their lives they have their things that you're they're doing just like yourself but you can send a simple text and say hey by the way you know i usually work 9 to 5 um i have a very demanding job so if i respond if i don't respond right away throughout the day or if the responses are sporadic or you don't hear from me until the end of the night it's not because i'm ignoring you it's just because i'm focused on work and even that for me is like that's fantastic thank you great that's amazing for being open and clear and communicative. So I don't mind hearing from that person all day because I know that they have something going on and they've already communicated that. Um, you know, if I was interested in someone and I knew I was going to have a busy day, like I said, I would inform them. I would let them know. I would tell them ahead of time so they don't think that I'm ghosting them. And the unfortunate reality of modern dating is that a lot of of people ghost. I will not get into that right now, but it's a topic that I cover in in other episodes on my YouTube channel, on my TikTok page, but you know, it's 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 unfortunate. Um consistent communication is important in any dating dynamic because you are getting to know this person, right? Um it's an indication of their interest for you um, and their willingness to engage in conversation as well. So if someone only messages you like once every few days or is giving you half ass responses to your questions or you find yourself to be the one that's constantly reaching out and checking in, it could be a sign, not it could be, it probably is a sign that they aren't interested or they're hiding something. And in addition to this, be cautious of anyone who seems to be trying to rush the relationship. This could be someone who wants to meet up immediately or who is pushing for personal information too quickly. Um, and you know, I'm a huge proponent and I 
encourage you to be open to meeting new people. But it's also important to take things at a comfortable pace and set boundaries. So if someone is trying to rush things, it could be a sign that they are not interested in a real relationship or are looking for something more casual. And the third thing here is requesting any kind of money or personal information. Even though I feel like this goes without saying, one of the biggest red flags to look out for on dating apps is someone who is requesting money or personal information. And this could include someone who asks for money directly, right? Asks for personal information such as your address or your social security number or tries to get you to click on a suspicious link. And while it's important to be open and trusting in a relationship, it's also important to be cautious and protect yourself from potential scams or fraud. So if you haven't seen The Tinder Swindler on Netflix, please go watch it. This documentary literally blows my mind every time I watch it. Like the fact that this guy was able to get away with what he got away with and I feel I feel absolutely terrible for what these these women experienced, right? And it's unfortunate because a lot of people are like, "Oh, well, you know, that's their fault. You know, why would they let themselves get into this position. Why would you ever give this person money? But you don't really know until you're in that situation, especially if you've developed a strong connection with somebody and everything seems to be perfect from the very beginning. But again, if they start asking you for any kind of money, right? If someone is requesting money or personal information, block and report them immediately, right? Dating apps can be a great way to meet new people and to find love, but it's also important to be aware of the potential risks and the red flags. As someone who identifies as queer, you'll more than likely face unique challenges when it comes to online dating. But by being aware of these red flags, you can protect yourself and find the relationship you deserve. You know, I want to I want to take a minute to talk about a a personal story that I experienced. Um, sorry if you guys heard the tapping on my chair. Sometimes I totally forget that I'm recording a podcast and I feel like I'm just talking to you right here in front of me. And I forget about sound and audio and camera and all of that stuff. And the videographer will look over at me like, eh, don't do that. <laughs> Correct. You just did it, actually. Um, but I was... I was seeing a guy. Um, I don't know if I would say sing. Um, we went on a few dates. Let's put it that way. We met in Los Angeles. Um, really attractive guy. And we were talking via the app for a while, right? Not a while, like weeks on end, but I just mean like a day or two. And I remember he did something that that shocked me because I wasn't ready for it, but he FaceTimed me. And I was like, whoa, what? No, no, this is weird. So of course I answered because I have nothing to hide. Um, and he was saying, you know, I just wanted to make sure that you are who you say you are, which again, very obvious that a lot of people fake or create fake or create fake profiles or catfish or whatever. So he verified I was who um, I said I was, <clears throat> and we went on a date. And the first date was literally he just coming to my neighborhood. He parked and we kind of walked around my neighborhood, explored a little bit. And then the next date, I want to say it was like lunch um, or a dinner, went over to his friend's house, had some drinks. The next date, we went on a hike. The next date, we went um, thrifting and antiquing. Um, so it was, it was, it seemed good because it was different than what I was used to in regards to the types of dates. And then all of a sudden, he started to just pull back. And he wasn't really as communicative as he was. And usually I was getting the excuse that he was busy or he had things going on or he wasn't exactly sure about when the next time he would be available. And I found myself in a position where I was reaching out more than he was reaching out to me. And I had to take a step back and say, okay, what is realistic? What is unrealistic? How much of this is me being too forward and too aggressive? And how much of this is him being completely avoidant and dismissive? And what I came to the when I when I came to the conclusion that it was actually him being avoidant and dismissive, I basically just had a conversation with him, right? I asked him if he was willing to talk, and I told him, look, 
I appreciate if you got a lot of things going on in your life, but I know what I bring to the table. I know what I'm looking for. Um, and I know what I'm willing to invest in regards to building a relationship. And it doesn't feel like you are at that same place. So I'm going to back off completely. You do you. I'm going to do me, right? That's a very short version of this. And I tell this story on uh, my YouTube channel as well. And he was totally agreeable and he understood and he was apologetic and all of those things. And we went our separate ways and we didn't talk again. And the reason why I say this is because, you know, being dating can be really frustrating and very, very disappointing in a lot of ways. And you may think that you you meet somebody and things are going really well and then it takes a turn. For me, the inconsistency in communication, right? So going from talking consistently to being completely sporadic, not really responding, being evasive, that was a red flag for me. And I could have chosen to ignore the red flag and continue to lean in or observe the red flag, break it down a little bit, and make a decision based on that. And that's what I did. And to be honest with you, I'm so glad that I did because, you know, I I just knew. I knew that this person wasn't ready for a serious relationship, and that's what I was looking for, and I didn't want to waste any time. Granted, I gave time to to getting to know him and all of those things, but there comes a point where you have to say to yourself, enough is enough, right? I'm I'm done investing any more time in this because I don't deserve this, and I deserve to find somebody, be with somebody who's willing to invest equal amount of time. So don't ignore the red flags. Um, there are a multitude of other red flags. And if you're interested in knowing what those are, like I said, I created a course on uh, the one-on-one of dating for gay and bisexual men because I know that the the world of dating in the queer community can be a shit show sometimes. So I would highly recommend checking that out if this is something that you are struggling with. Or let's have a chat. Let's sit down. Let's talk. Let's break down your situation and and come up with a plan together to help you get out of this rut or to start to identify red flags. And all that information is in will be in the profile of the podcast. I also have multiple different um, resources, right? Like a website, a YouTube channel, uh, my social media pages, and you know, just visit me on any one of those and let's let's have a conversation. Let's have a chat. I hope you guys found this episode to be helpful. Um, I hope you find this to be a a good resource. Let me know, right? Let me know if you find this to be a useful tool. Even if you don't, also let me know. I'm totally open to constructive criticism. Um, But if you are mean about things, I will block your ass. Just saying. Anyways, hope you're having an amazing day. um, And I will see you guys in the next episode.